downloaded quickly. And so we'll just get right into it. I'm Doug. Um, I do freelance developer relations. So I help people help companies figure out how to communicate with the developer community. Um, and then I also do a lot of performance stuff. So today I'm going to talk about images. Um, I also do a lot with video and um, I wrote a book for uh, on how to speed up your Android app. And if you are interested in that, uh, the link over on the bottom left is the uh, PDF of my book. So if you want to download it, um, it's that's it. And I'll, I, I'll just share the slides if, uh, for the meetup later on. All right. And then if you want to get a hold of me, I'm on Twitter, email, website. Um, I can't see the chat because I only have one uh, monitor. So if you do have a question, feel free to just uh, to speak out loud, unmute yourself, and, and just chat. All right, we're going to get started by looking at this Alp. This is in Switzerland. And uh, how many of you just... You, you don't have to answer verbally, but how many of you get nervous thinking about walking along this walkway that's, you know, sort of literally nailed to the side of an alp? You know, it's got a great a grating on the bottom. So when you look down at your feet, you're just looking straight down, you know, 500 meters to the floor of the mountain. You know, it's a little bit terrifying. <clears throat> about four years ago, Erickson did a study. And in their study... They put sensors on people's heads to measure stress responses. And they found that thinking about standing on the edge of a cliff, you know, was stressful. It raised people's stress responses. Um, interestingly, if you they thought about a slow mobile website, that was actually more stressful to them than standing on the edge of a cliff. And so that's important because if you're building like an e-commerce website, you don't want people to be stressed out just as they start off. You want them to be happy. You know, when you go to a, when when we were allowed to go to malls and we did it regularly, it's always bright lights and happy music because if you're happy, you spend more money. And if you're building a web page and people are frustrated just because the page won't load, they're less likely to spend money. There's research showing this. Um, Google found that a three second delay causes happier customers to abandon your site. Um, it increases frustration, lowers engagement. Amazon on Walmart, like 20 years ago, found that a delay in their website um, drops revenue. And my favorite uh, stat on all of this is 4% of mobile users admit to throwing their phones when a website is slow. So you think about building web pages. This is just a random sample of 10,000 mobile websites. And you can see that like most web pages are, are close to or over 50% images in terms of tonnage. So an easy, easy way to make your web page faster is to use fewer kilobytes for the images. And you're going to, you know, if you make that 50%, 30% or 25%, you're just going to reduce the amount of stuff that has to be downloaded and make your web page faster. So let's just go through that really, really quickly and what we need to do. Um, Lighthouse is a tool from Google. Um, it's built into your Chrome Dev Tools. Uh, you can test Lighthouse online. It's really, really easy to do. It does a lot of uh, accessibility stuff and performance. Um, <clears throat> and there are four image optimizations built into Lighthouse. Quality, format, sizing, and lazy loading. So we're going to look at how the web is built and use these four metrics from Lighthouse just to see how the web is doing. Now, what's cool about this is um, if you're interested about performance, uh, you should use webpagetest.org. It's an open source tool. It's free. Um, it's like the best tool for performance out there. You go to the web page, you enter a URL, and it'll test your web page on real devices in anywhere around the world, and you can choose where you want it to go. Where, where you want the test to be run. Um, and it will run a Lighthouse test for you, which is awesome. The HTTP archive is built on top of web page test. And every month it tests 5 million web pages on mobile device and on the desktop. So it's all, all the data is then stored in tables in BigQuery that you can then do analysis. So what this means is, Every month, we have a database with 
5 million entries with Lighthouse data on these four image optimizations. Um, so let's look to see what Lighthouse tells us because we can now query 5 million web pages to see how websites are doing with quality, for example. So what's the recommendation for image quality? If you have a JPEG, you can lower the quality of the image, and this is a lossy compression. What that means, what a lossy compression means is you're actually removing pixels. So it tries to blend the blues in the sky. It, it's combining pixels to make the image smaller. And 85% generally makes the image half the original size in kilobytes. And in general, no one can tell the difference. You can use Image Magic to do this. There are a lot of tools that will save your images at 85% quality. So here's a 100% image. Here's the 85% image. There's no difference. No one can tell the difference. Uh, there's still more pixels here than, than we need. Um, but as you can see, it went from 3.6 megabytes to 1.8. So we've halved the size of the image. Um, if we look, this is last year. Let's oh, this year. Um, the score for uh, image quality is between zero and one, and about half of the web is scoring a one. So fifty percent of the web is doing a really good job, um, but thirty-one percent is failing, getting less than a half. Right. So that means that you know there are a bunch of people doing the right thing, but there's also a huge bunch of people who are not doing this very very well. Um, and if we look at the data, for the folks that are failing, the median web page that's failing would be 3.7 seconds faster on mobile and use 130K less data. So, you know, there's a pretty big, it's not a huge kilobyte savings, but three seconds faster is pretty impressive. Um, for the folks that, you know, score is zero, which is, you know, a, a significant part of the web, like, what is that, like 10% of the web right there? Um, could be 10 seconds faster and use 1.6 megabytes less data. But how low can we go? If you look really carefully at the 50% image, there are some artifacts in the sky. Most people aren't looking at your images that carefully, but you know this still isn't very high quality, um, and you couldn't automate to 50% because sometimes it would be really bad. If I go to 20%, you can see this, the, the banding in the sky. We definitely want not want to go that low a quality. But you know, can you go lower than 85%? And the answer is, of course, yes, you can. But where is that sweet spot? There are a bunch of tools that will do this. Um, there's tools that have Booter Ugly, which is a Google tool, or structural similarity built in. And what this, these tools do is they lower the quality, so they remove pixels, right, until the human eye can spot a difference and then they go a little bit higher quality than that. So if the human eye can't tell a difference, you're just removing pixels that no one's gonna see anyway, so you might as well just do it. And when I did that, I shaved off another 400K on this image. So, you know, you probably can't tell the difference here, and the image is, is 400K smaller. So you might as well do that, that's gonna make the page load faster. Um, so, you know, I ran these into web page tests, um, you can see testing on a Motorola G4, um, the load time drops from 21.7 seconds to 9.5 seconds. Kilobytes drop from 3.7 to 1.5 megabytes. Just going to that structural similarity. The second thing we can do is improve on the image format. There are a lot of image formats out there. Um, let's talk about uh, vector graphics, SVGs. So as scalable vector graphics are images draw, drawn as shapes. And because they're just vectors, they're infinitely scalable, right? So they're basically XML documents, and you can add them in line to your HTML. This Twitter icon, can I can stretch it as big as I want, and you'll never see any artifacts in it because um, they're vectors. Um, but you can mess these up. And here's an example. This is still live on the web. It's been live for a, a while now. Um, it's not Target. It's a company that has this logo as sort of a divider on their web page. Um, but if you open up the SVG, like at the top here, you I can't see my mouse. I don't know where it is. It's probably on a different screen. Oh, here it is. All right. 
um, you can see we've got the circles and we've got the paths and we're drawing the circles. And then you can see Adobe Illustrator and then like metadata. And what happens is when you create an SVG in Illustrator, it base 64 encodes the original image and plops it in as metadata into your SVG. Um, so this image is 946 kilobytes, which if any of you use an SVG, you know that's, that's just wrong. So the fix is you click right here on line 30, you drag to the bottom and you press delete, and then you save it, and it's one kilobyte. Right, this has been live on the web for like literally years now. Um, it's an SVG, so it's 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 XML, right? It's a text file, so you can gzip it. You can use Brotly. You can get it down to like half a kilobyte. Um, this web page is not doing that. They are completely screwing this up. I'm just gonna turn off my phone because that was really really loud. All right. Um, they actually have two of these. They've got the red version and the orange version. Um, those of you who do web development and do CSS, you know that you can take an SVG and you can color it with CSS. So you could have two lines of CSS, you know, 600 bytes of a gzipped SVG, and you'd be good. Um, this web page would be 1.9 megabyte approach of having two giant SVGs that are way too big. That's an easy thing to fix, and it probably should just be one of those things that you see with testing right you should look at a web page and say why are these images 900k that's not right anyway other things we can look at pngs is a loss less uh format you can't remove pixels and lower the quality right it's always going to be a very high quality image pngs are awesome like you, you can use pngs there's nothing wrong with it they have an alpha channel which allows for transparency which is great um but here's an issue that I see quite regularly on web pages is um, you can see this, those of you who use a Mac may recognize this file format, screenshot underscore year dash month dash day underscore time, right? This is a web, this is somebody who got the perfect image on their Mac and then took a screenshot of it and then put that live on their web page. And that's cool, right? You got it perfect in Photoshop, but you might as well just save it in Photoshop where you can actually save for web or do any of these things that will optimize some of the quality things. Um, Apple screenshot tool isn't designed to do that. You should need to do some post-processing on that. And what I found is I grabbed 3,000 of these and I just went and I changed them to a JPEG. I did some quality adjustments and I found that I could make 35% of those images 10% the original size. Uh, you know, 86% of them could be half the original size. There's a huge, a huge performance possibilities here. Um, you shouldn't use screenshots anyway, but if you do, you should do some optimization because you can really squeeze out a lot of data. Another format that gets a lot of uh, um, talk recently is WebP. Uh, WebP is a newer format. JPEG is like 27 or 28 years old. WebP is about 10 years old, maybe 11 now. So it's a newer format, um, but it only is landing in Safari like right now. It got announced this summer. Um, but what's great is now that it is landing in Safari, um, you know, last summer it looked like this. We had it in, in Firefox, in our Chromium browsers, right? We had it in Opera. Um, now we've got it in all the major modern browsers, right? You need to fall back to JPEG for IE, but everyone else can see a WebP. And in general, you see a huge amount of savings by converting, converting your images over to WebP. Um, there's a great blog post that came out earlier this week about AVIF, which is another new format that's coming out. Uh, it's currently in Chrome and in technical preview for Firefox. Um, but there's a lot of thought that because Apple is on the steering committee of that format, that it'll get into Safari a lot faster. Um, both WebP and AVIF are interesting image formats in that they are essentially one frame videos. WebP is based on the WebM VP8 video format. And uh, the AV, 
one format of video is now also there's a one frame version which is the avif um, but that's going to be coming soon uh and what's cool about that format is it is also really new it's like a year or two old now and it's half the size of webp so we're there's a lot of improvement here on images to make images smaller all right if i'd use the webp i save another 400k right i was at 1.4 megabytes now i'm at one megabyte no change in quality no one can tell a difference um if you have different formats you can use the picture tag and the browser uses the first format that it knows what to deal with so if you're on an older version of safari it will ignore the webp and go to the jpeg if you're on a new version of safari or if you're um it'll, it'll use the webp or any other browser um, unless you're on ie and then you fall back to the jpeg and you can see here when i do the test i save two and a half seconds another 500k um using image formats in the wild 18 percent passed a year ago we're up to 21 percent like we're making small progress year over year um, but still 60 percent of the web is failing this best practice um, we're talking median page would be six seconds faster six and a half seconds faster these folks that down here, I mean, if you look like 28% of the web is failing this, 13% of the web could be 15 seconds faster on mobile and use two and a half megabytes less data by switching their formats to WebP. Uh, pretty uh, significant savings. It's something you should look into. The most common one of these optimizations is image sizing, right? You have a different size image that you serve to the desktop than you do to mobile devices. And you probably have a couple different breakpoints. You may serve, you may have really small, small, medium, large, or, you know, everybody's a little bit different on how they do this. <coughs> but the issue here is like, here's this image. It's 13 million pixels. Um, and I'm at 1.6 megabytes. I do all my optimizations we've talked about. I'm still at 18 or 800 kilobytes but it's still 13 million pixels, right? I haven't removed removed that as the, the data that's being downloaded is still 13 million pixels. Show up on a small screen, the phone has to download 13 million pixels, but only 500,000 show up on the screen. So, and the small device ends up throwing away like 97% of what was just downloaded. Um, the other problem with this is of course, the CPU has to fire up and decide which of the 12.5 million pixels need to be deleted um, before it shows up on the screen. So you're draining the battery, you're adding more delay <coughs> to getting this show up on the screen. It's sort of like when you buy something from Amazon and it comes in a giant box and you have to throw away all the brown paper and all the little air packs to find out that like your kids ordered a pencil. We can do better than this. Um, so here's the data on throwing away those those pixels. This was a 16 million pixel image, is 1 million on the screen. A desktop only took 78 milliseconds to decode that image. A Motorola G4 takes 200 milliseconds. Like that's starting to be a perceptible delay, right? We're starting to notice that. An Alcatel 1X, which is a really low-end Android device, takes 800. It's got a very low-powered processor it adds another 800 milliseconds to decode the image. So it's actually making your web page even slower for people on low-end devices. There are a lot of devices out there. These are all the Android devices out there. Size of the box is market share. So these are all like Samsung's. Um, red means very, very slow CPUs. So there are a lot of devices with very low market share, but added up, they make up a huge amount huge amount of the market they have very slow processors so a lot of your customers are affected by this um the trick is of course generate a bunch of different sizes um right in this case i generated them all 25 kilobytes apart which is probably too many um but i'm only throwing away 100,000 pixels now that's going to show up on the screen a lot faster it's only 120k as well there are a lot of tools out there. This is a web page that will do it for you. Um, 
you know a lot of content management systems can you can set your breakpoints and it when you upload an image it will resize it for you in all those different sizes you should just make sure you're doing that well, this is where the huge savings comes in um, because now on my motorola phone i'm serving a uh, an image that's properly sized with the proper number of pixels um, i can remove a lot of data so it went from one megabyte to 121k seven seconds down to two seconds right huge savings now you know 120k now we're talking something reasonable to have on your web page um most of the world is doing this right two-thirds of the web in 2020 um passed this best practice um only 20 percent are failing of those that are failing you know again one and a half seconds here for these down here that are getting a zero you could be 14 seconds faster the last one is lazy loading. So the first three have all been each image you have on your web page. This is what you need to do to fix it. Lazy loading is this idea that only show the stuff that your customers are looking at. And so if you only have to load two images instead of six, your web page is going to load faster. And then you can use JavaScript to lazy load in the images as people scroll close to them. Um, there are a lot of blog posts on how to do this. There are a lot of JavaScript libraries that will do this for you. Um, and this one has changed a lot. Um, well, it hasn't actually. Well, I, from a couple of years ago to now, we're at 60% passing, 30% uh, failing. And again, you know, you'd be a lot faster if you lazy load stuff, if you're not loading the images that are way down at the bottom of the screen. Um, a lot of ways this happens. This is, you know, when you do a Google image search, um, <clears throat> they have preview images. So these are all SVGs. They're single color. They're probably like 200 bytes, um, super small. And you can actually see here, they've got the color of the image as the background. So you see these placeholder images come into place. And then when the full size image loads, it just gets replaced with the full size image. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, there are a lot of cool ways to do this. <clears throat> I like this squib approach. It's a textured SVG. Um, so rather than just one color, you can kind of see there's some texture to it. So you instead of the waterfall, instead of just green, you get this sort of textured idea. There are a lot of different ways to do this. Lazy loading is starting to come into Chrome. You can do it on mobile devices, uh, on, on mobile Chrome. And so this is a web page that I built that's really, really heavy in images. It's like 13 megabytes. And so these are the viewports on the desktop. And when I load this in Chrome, you can see, you know, the browser doesn't really know where the images are showing up on the screen. So they sort of just load chaotically, right? None of the, not all the images here at the top have loaded, where as a user, you're interested in seeing the images. But if you look down here, like images at the bottom have loaded and this image still isn't there yet. Well, with the lazy loading, and this is in uh, light mode on Chrome mobile, it downloads the first couple, it, it figures out where all the images have to go on the page. Um, initially, it was downloading the first kilobyte of every image. I think they've changed that slightly. But what they can do is now they can lay out the entire page. You can see that there's no reflow of text anymore. We're in the old one, the text constantly is reflowing. And now all the images are, they know where the images are going to be. <coughs> and you can see I'm using that squib library. So you can see like this one of the house, like almost looks like a house. But because they know the order of the images, the browser knows the order of the images. Now the images load from top to bottom, which is the way you scroll down a page, which makes sense. So lazy loading has a lot of cool um, positive effects. Um, let's talk about animated GIFs really quickly. Um, this was a movie I took on my phone of a goat eating a leaf, 1.4 megabytes. <clears throat> I turn it into an animated GIF and have it loop, and it's 3.8 megabytes. The reason for this is actually um, GIF is, again, a really old format. If you go back 30 years and you read the spec, it says that GIF is not intended as a platform for animation, even though it can be done in a limited way. Like the people who wrote the spec are saying, don't use animated GIFs. 
So we probably shouldn't use animated GIFs. Um, the reason for that is an animated GIF, if it's at 15 frames per second, it's literally 15 GIFs a second that are flipped through, like an old, like an old flash and flip book. What you should do is turn it into a movie. So GIFs are 256 colors. Um, you can take out the audio track out of your video because um, obviously uh, GIFs are silent. And when I do that, this video is 250K, which is 93% smaller. And you may be wondering, well, Doug, what about like Twitter? Twitter uses GIFs. And if you look at the bottom left, it says GIF. There's obviously this looping video of this dog, which is awesome. But if you go into, <coughs> excuse me, if you go into DevTools, lo and behold, it's a, it's a movie. It's an MP4 that's looping. And the reason that Twitter does this is that it's 400K, right? A 400K um, movie is going to download a lot faster than the couple megabyte GIF. And so Slack, Facebook, uh, Twitter, all these companies that have GIFs built into their social media platforms, they're actually using movies. Actually, if you go to Giphy, they are actually using movies as well. It's just so much faster. The way you do that, video tag, loop, autoplay, muted. So it's going to loop. It's going to autoplay. Um, all videos that autoplay have to be set to muted for it to work on mobile. It sounds silly because the video is actually silent, but that's just the way the browsers are built. And then this will loop. If you're really interested in doing it fast, um, Safari will let you actually put movies in the picture tag. So you can have the looping uh, MP4. You can have a animated WebP, which is supported in some browsers, and then you can fall back to the GIF. Um, the GIF is takes 22 seconds to load, is 3.8 megabytes. The animated WebP takes 18 seconds, it's 3 megabytes. And the movie takes 4.5 seconds, and it's 250K. Like, the obvious winner here is we should just do the video always. Just to quickly wrap up, what are your customers saying? Um, I mentioned light mode. Um, in respect to lazy loading, <coughs> light mode also turns on a header that says save data. And uh, Tim in the in Belgium shows that 11% um, <coughs> of his customers, 58% of his users have the save data header and 11% of them have it on. And so if 10% of your customers are asking for a lighter version of your web page, might as well just do that. Serve slightly smaller images, maybe slightly lower quality images. <clears throat> they want the web page to use less data and they want it to be faster. 11% of his users have that turned on. So you can think about ways that you can serve a slightly different site that still has all the great content but uses less data to support what your end users are asking for. You can also use the Network Information API. And this will tell you what the speed of the network connection is. So a few years ago, I was uh, I stayed in an Airbnb in rural Ireland. And the Airbnb said that it had Wi-Fi, which I needed for work. Um, what the Airbnb didn't say was that that Wi-Fi was connected to a 3G router that really only had 2G during the day. Um, so of course, that was a problem. But what I found really interesting is when I went on to Facebook, there were no videos. When I went on to Twitter, the GIFs didn't autoplay, right? These two social media giants knew that if I couldn't get those videos to play, I'd be pissed off at Facebook and at Twitter. So they just turned them off if I'm on a crappy connection. If I then went into town to like download my email so that I could do my work, I could get onto Facebook and Twitter and see all the videos and all the GIFs. They worked. So they are literally looking at my network connection and serving me different content based on my network speed. It's not rocket science. It's something anyone can do. So like, if they're doing it, you should think about doing it as well. So in conclusion, we can optimize uh, image quality, format sizing. We can lazy load images. Turn your GIFs into movies and monitor your customers' headers. Um, these are the tools I used to build this talk. 
And so thanks everyone for listening. Images can be beautiful and fast. Um, if you have any questions, let's open up the floor. Great, thank you for for the talk. That was that was really nice. I learned a lot of tricks. Um, I have one question, so I'm going to start. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned a lot of different tools and techniques. I'm a developer. Most attendees are as well. So they're probably thinking, okay, is there any way I can automate some of them, some of that? Is there any way I can use something in my workflow? to basically automatically do the 85 percent compression for instance or um how how many of these steps can we automate and yeah any tips in that uh, in that uh, matter would be perfect it's a great question so um let me just let me, let me go into this mode here we go um so there are a lot of command line tools that can automate all of this. Mm -hmm. um, let me just go back to images. All right, so um, that's... So image magic is a great tool. It's a command line tool. And so here I just set quality 85, here's my in, inbound image and here's the output image um and obviously you can do that into different folders um a tool that i use a lot <clears throat> you can actually see let me just hide that um image opt-in um <laughs> you can actually see i've been taking screenshots and optimizing it with this and so you you know i can take a screenshot on my computer over here to whoops documents screenshots right so that screenshot i just took is uh 2.2 megabytes now it's 400. right it's nice drag and drop um, and done <laughs> and so the guy who writes image optim his name is cornell and he's just like brilliant when it comes to images um like there are a lot of tools like this. I think the biggest problem with images is I wrote a blog post on this a couple weeks ago, but um, I actually looked at images on the web that had the term COVID in the file name because a lot of companies went out and added a hero image to their web page to respond to the pandemic. And what I found was those images weren't properly sized and were generally a lot larger than other images. And that's because a lot of times it isn't us as developers who are updating the images, right? It's somebody who isn't technical. They're like, oh crap, we need to respond to this global pandemic. And they create something and then they just upload it and it's ginormous and they're not optimizing for that. So there actually needs to be some things that probably happen on the back end as well to do the resizing automatically. Like I said, a lot of content management tools are set up to do that. Or you could just build a pipeline that when an image gets uploaded, it automatically gets resized before hitting the content management system. Because a lot of times the people who are adding the images aren't the developers. They're people who just, I need to put something on the web page, and they do it, and they muck it up because of that. Yeah, that makes that makes perfect sense. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> Any other questions? Anyone? So there are no questions in the chat. I don't see anyone unmuting themselves. So I guess we are all good for for tonight. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Doug. That was that was really uh, super interesting. Uh, lots of nice tips. I'm definitely gonna 
pick a few of those and use them in my own workflow. So that, that was great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for organizing. And it was nice to meet all of you guys virtually. Thank you. Thank you. Are, thank you, you, uh, yeah, are, you, thank are, you. Living, are you living in uh, Edinburgh? Or is that like just a trip for fun? Or what's? I am, well, I'm living in the UK. Um, we are in Edinburgh just for fun. Um, I've been traveling with my family for like four and a half years now. And uh, to be honest, we have a storage locker.